Okay, so ready? So the ratio between boys and girls, go ahead and write this underneath your notes or underneath that definition. So boys to girls. Yeah. The ratio of boys to girls, let's see, this is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. 10 boys, 2 girls. So for every 10 boys, there's 2 girls. If we reduce that, that becomes for every 5 boys in this class, there's 1 girl. That's what a ratio is. Okay? So for every 5 boys, there's 1 girl. Now, um, Ratios are extremely, extremely, extremely important when we get to trigonometry. And let me explain why. This is where you got to focus like a laser beam now. Um, let me pass out. Actually, let's see. Um, let me do this first. Yeah. Let me pass this out. It'll be a small note guide. You may recognize this. You may have seen some trigonometry before. So you write an arrow, you're going to put the word tangent. And what tangent means is opposite side. Go to write opposite side over adjacent side. I'm going to fit that in on your note guide. Opposite side over adjacent side. Okay. Now, look at this picture that's right above here. So after you write that little equation, notice this picture over here. You have a bunch of right triangles that you, as you can see. You know they're all 90 degrees. Go to put little 90 degrees boxes here on these for me. Do that with me. Look at every single right triangles and layers. Right? They all share angle A. Look, here's angle A. The smallest right triangle has angle A. The bigger right triangle has angle A. The bigger and bigger the right triangle gets, notice they all have angle A in common. So far, so good. Now I'm going to show you the magic, so to speak, of trigonometry the core, the essence, the, the bare bones of it, what, what it really means, as you have your earphones and phones out, right? There we go. Now, here's angle A. Let's find the ratio of the opposite side to angle A over the adjacent side, just like we did boys to girls. So he, look at angle A. It's some specific. We don't know the degrees of it, but what side is opposite angle A for the small triangle? It would be this, this side right here. QJ, huh? Side QJ. And watch the language, please. Notice side QJ. How, how big is side QJ? It's almost one. It's not exactly one, right? It's about three quarters of the way. So I'm going to put BC. Let's see here. Actually, we're going to go from the biggest first. We're going from the biggest first. So look at, look at the big side. Opposite angle A is side BC, right? So Side BC in this case would be, how big is BC? It's about 6. Huh? So we're going to put 6 over, actually, it's right up here. My bad. Let's put 6 right here next to BC. 6 divided by uh, so this is opposite to angle A. And now this side is adjacent to angle A. Notice how it's touching. This side is adjacent to angle A. And how big is this side from here, from A to C? How big is that? 8. So 6 divided by 8. I'm going to punch 6 divided by 8 on my calculator. Watch this. 0 0.75. So look at the ratio 0 0.75. Do that for me. Sure, go for it. 
How about the next smaller triangle now? Watch this. So the next smaller side, what's the side opposite to A? Well, it would be KD. There's KD. Over the adjacent side would be 7. So I'm going to put 7 for AD, but let's see. KD would be, I'll say that's about 5.25 or 5.5. So 5.5 divided by 7, 0 0.77. It's almost the same. It's not quite the same because I actually, for KD, looking from year to year, I, I made it 5.5. Go ahead and fill that in. I estimated. I just eyeballed it. That's about 5.5. All right. Let's keep going. How about LE now? Side LE, that's opposite to A. Uh, that's about 4.6. Let's see, 4.75, right? It's not quite 5, L-E. It's almost at 5, It's but it's about right here, L-E. So it's about 4.75 divided by A-E. A-E is going to be 6. So on my calculator, 4.75 divided by 6, watch what I get. About 7.8. Notice how they're hanging out. Look at the ratios are always about 0.7 something. They're very close to each other. They would be exactly the same if I actually was estimating perfectly. But right now I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I, I said this was about 5.5. I said this LE was about 4.75. Look at the next one now. How about the next smaller right triangle, MF? That's right at 4. Look at 4 divided by AF. AF is going to be 5. So 4 divided by 5 on my calculator, I'll do the calculations for us. 4 divided by 5 is 0 0.8. That's still closest 0 0.75. Right, Franco? NG now. NG is going to be about 3.2. Divided by, look at, that's a side opposite to A. That's opposite over 4. So 3.2 3 divided by 4 on my calculator, 0 0.8. So they're roughly the same measure. Let's keep going. Let's finish the last three. OH, that side opposite to angle A, and that's about 2.5. And I'm going to divide it by AH. AH is 3. 2.5 divided by 3 on my calculator is going to be 0 0.8 again. Oops. Okay, so far so good. What you're starting to see is that no matter how big the triangle or small the triangle, the ratio is the same with side opposite to side adjacent. Let's do the last two. Side, P, side PI. 1.7 on top divided by AI is, uh, actually let's go, this is about 1.5. 1.5 divided by AI is going to be 2. 2.5, yeah, I did 2.5. So 1.5 divided by 2, 0 0.75. Still hanging around. And last but not least, last but not least, QJ, look at QJ, that's 0.75. AJ, from here to here, is 1. 0.75 divided by 1 is 0 0.75. So the moral of the story, the ratio is always about the same. This ratio is the same. They all shared angle A. Matter of fact, if I would have made bigger angles, check this out, or bigger triangles, look at this. If I would have extended this higher and even higher and so on and so on, made it bigger and bigger, the ratio would have been 0 0.75, 0 0.8 around there. They're always the same. Now, how does that affect us? Check this out. So put that to the side and go back to your... Um, 
notes. So on your notes now, this is example one. Is this the warm up? My bad. I'm looking out. There we go. Ah, it's too much. I don't want to. There we go. There we go. You get some crazy trig right now. Here, I'll take one from the quiz here. All right. Here's example one. So here we go. Let's find, find the tangent ratio of the acute angles. So I'm going to copy this down. We're only going to do two examples today of the acute angles. Find the tangent ratio of the acute angles. And then I'm going to put round to the nearest fourth decimal. Round to the nearest fourth decimal. So we copy this down. So your screen looks exactly like mine. Now, some of you are going to go to Chafee, Mount Sac, wherever you're going to go. This, this website is a great website, not only for graphing, but you have a scientific calculator on the lower left. So go to them right here on the lower left, go to tap, type tap it, scientific calculator, and you're going to have this screen pop up. So don't use online calculator any, any longer. Use this one. Go to desmos.com and use a scientific calculator. Now, you have that screen in front of you. Let's go back to your notes. Right now, the mission is to find the ratio of the tangent, the tangent ratio of the acute angles. Can someone tell me what are the acute angles here? What angles? Angle A, A and B are definitely acute. C would be a B, C would be a what kind of angle? A right angle. So anytime you have a right triangle, you got two acute angles. The ones that are not the right angle, they're less than 90. Obviously, you could actually see it. So what we're going to do in our notes now, we're going to write going to write tangent of A and the tangent of B. write that for me. Underneath the mission, write tangent of A and tangent of B. About five minutes ago, we wrote down on that note guide, what is the tangent of any angle? It's what over what? Can someone tell me? Nice. So tangent is equal to, I'm going to put OPP over ADJ, adjacent. Right now, we're not on a note guide. The note guide's on the side. We're on our regular notes. So tangent is always going to be the side that's opposite over the side that is, that's adjacent. So let's do it. Let's locate angle A. Here's angle A. What side is opposite angle A? BC, so give me the number, give me the, how big it is. 
8, huh? So go to put 8 divided by, that's the opposite of A, adjacent. So adjacent, remember, adjacent means touching. When we're doing trigonometry, though, pay attention here. When we're doing trigonometry, whenever I ask for the adjacent side, I'm asking for the side that's touching the angle that's not the hypotenuse. So this side's touching A, so is this side. Which one's not the hypotenuse? That's the one we pick. Every time we do adjacent, we pick the one that's not the hypotenuse. So go put 8 over 6. Go to your calculator now, hit 8 divided by 6, and give me the decimal. Somebody. Awesome. So I said round the nearest fourth decimal. Watch this. 1.3333. The fifth decimal is not five or bigger, so three stays the same. It would have been four if the number to the right of this three, if the fifth, the fifth three was a five or bigger, that would have been a four. So we're done here. There's our tangent ratio. Tomorrow is the big day of why, I'm, why these ratios are such a big deal. Why engineers use them, why weapon systems use them, why all of engineering uses this. What's the big deal about this ratio? That's, that's coming tomorrow. Today we're just practicing finding the ratios. Now let's find the tangent of B. To B or not to B. Here's B. Here's angle B. What's opposite angle B? Six. Going to put six. Now what's adjacent to angle B? 8 or 10, we pick the one that's not the hypotenuse, in this case 8. Type that puppy in your calculator. 6 divided by 8, run the nearest fourth decimal, please. 6 divided by 8, somebody. 0 0.75, it stops. So we don't have to run the nearest fourth decimal, stop at the second decimal, we're good to go. So far, so good. One more, oh, question. Right, because we don't have to go to the fourth decimal, huh? It stopped at the second decimal. This would be, if it keeps going on and on, round to the nearest fourth decimal. We estimate the nearest fourth decimal, because this one went on forever. It gets infinitely smaller. So in that case, we've got to stop somewhere for the sake of our assignment. Okay, one more, one more example, and we're done. Example two. Example two. Copy this one down here. Uh, it was a former quiz, but now that you've seen it, probably not. Want me to? We'll talk. Maybe you slip me a 20 later. We'll talk. No, it's good. All right, here we go. Find the tangent. So we're going to find tangent of acute angles. Last example for the day. Someone besides Garcia, can someone tell me what the acute angles are here? Leviata, give me one of them. Okay, he's got R. Leviata, give me the other one. Okay, cool. So let's find the tangent of R equals tangent of S equals. All right. Tangent is opposite OPP over ADJ, adjacent. Tomorrow I'm going to get into an acronym, actually maybe two days from now, of how to memorize that. But So, um, Agiad, what side is opposite to R? Beautiful. Rocha, what side is adjacent to R? What side is adjacent to R? What side's touching it? 28. I picked, she picked the one that's not the hypotenuse. Beautiful. So it's 28, 45 over 28 on your calculator. Give it to me to the fourth decimal, please. Somebody. 1.607? Nice. What was next to the 1, Garcia? 4, so it, it stayed a 1. If it was 5 or bigger, it would go up to a 2. Fourth decimal. We're good? Last one, though. Ariola. What side is opposite to S, Ariola? 
That's a point, huh? T is a point. What side is off to the S? Right, and how big is it? How big is PR? You're good. 28. So here we go. 28 divided by the side that's adjacent. Here it is, 45. Type that puppy in, please, somebody. 6222. Nice. Anybody disagree? It sounds good to me. We got 20 good minutes. Make use of your time. Assignment 25. 26 is coming too right now. So right now, it's on big ideas. Give me about three minutes, though. So.